bedroom upstairs and we were fortunate enough to um, get original Comstock furniture, the dresser and the bed are Comstock's. The mantelpiece is uh, maple and it also has a bevel mirror. When Mr. Comstock died in 1925, his furniture was sold off to townspeople. And we were lucky in that we knew the people who bought this bedroom set and we were able to purchase it. This bathroom is uh, original to the house. Mr. Comstock had five bathrooms in the house. It's unusual to have such large ones as well as large walk-in closets. Normally, a house that was built at this time had just wardrobes and no closets. The washstand belongs to the set that belong, is in the bathroom, and it's a Comstock The tub is original to the house. is in the east bedroom and it's built of pine. Notice it doesn't have beveled mirror above it as many of the other manacles do. And um, there are, I wanted to mention that there are four bedrooms in the house and each one is almost the same size as the room below it. As well as one more bedroom up in the attic that's a finished room. My parish prints were given to me by my aunt, my father's uh, younger sister. These doorknobs are in the old part of the house. Notice that on one side there's a wooden doorknob and on the other side it's a porcelain doorknob. Mr. Comstock put in his, the, the new part of the house, all brass doorknobs. Now we do have um, more wooden ones in um, various doors throughout the old part of the house. But uh, I wanted to, just mention that I also have a collection of doorknobs. This is our collection of doorknobs. <clears throat> we have a number of porcelain doorknobs and glass doorknobs. This one is before 1919 when the glass turned purple in the sun. Here's a brown pattern one. And then also old metal doorknobs. Do have a number of pieces of uh, china and pottery that and that we dug up in the yard that belonged to Mr. Comstock. This is an uh, old kerosene lamp chimney. A plate that has an R a red R in script on the bottom, a silver plated spoon, a gravy boat with a nice pattern that's Limoges, and a ginger jar. This piece was not dug, but it was sold with the other furniture that townspeople bought and my aunt bought this and gave it to me for present. The clothesline was important to Mr. Comstock as well as to us. He had a separate wash house and of course a help that did the laundry, but they always hung out their clothes. We don't have the separate wash house with the help but we do have a washing machine in place of it, but we still use the clothesline just as he did. There are
are six fireplaces in the house as well as three stoves. And Mr. Comstock, of course, used wood and so do we. We want uh, to keep our wood pile and so we, have, we had to petition the city to be able to do it. My father built this seesaw for us and since uh, I grew up here, having moved in this house in 1928, all four of us used it, my brothers and sister and I, and then my children used it as well, and now my grandchildren have used it. So that's three generations of children who have played on the seesaw. My father never threw anything away. If he'd walk down the street and see a bolt, he'd pick it up and save it. And he had jars full of old locks and keys. And my husband, John, decided that they needed to be displayed. So he put them on pieces of driftwood. These are the keys, just some of them. We still have jars full that we, John didn't get around to putting on something. This keyboard was made from the top of a sugar barrel, and um, my husband, John, decided he'd fix it up for a keyboard. The, all the keys at the bottom are from Mexico, and they fit in the big doors that the houses, that the haciendas would have for the corrals. And if you go down the street, you see different patterns. The holes would be different patterns, and for example, this one is a five. And this one, just a little curly cube, and this one's a three. And then these also are keys from Mexico. My grandfather settled in Ocoee. And this is a picture of a Sunday school picnic at Clay Springs. Clay Springs now is called Wekiwa Springs. And this was taken in uh, on May 18, 19, 1898. And my father is this person right here. This is my father. That's my father. He was born in Okoye, as well as his older sister and his next youngest sister. They were both born in Okoye. Then my grandfather decided to move to Winter Park because the schools were better in Winter Park because of Rollins College. It was normal to have only six grades, and that was all. But Rollins offered more than that. And so he moved to Winter Park. and in 1900 and he was on the uh, chairman of the city commissions in 1915 and my aunt was um, principal of winter park high, high school um, when it was the high school was in park avenue which has been torn down of course and now rollins has their parking garage there, but in 1921, she was principal of Winter Park High School. My grandfather had a, a good bit of land on the south side of Lake Sylvan, and he lived in the Harris McCollum house that has been designated one of the historic homes in Winter Park. And then from there, he moved to built a house on Phelps Avenue that later was sold when he died to the Granberries. And that also has been designated as a historic house. I started school, Park Avenue School, and went clear through 12 grades right here in Winter Park and ended up graduating from Rollins. 
I married John Parkman, who, who also was, grew, grew up here, and in 1947. And we traveled a good bit and then ended up here when our children, uh, well, Becky was in sixth grade and Bill was in the fourth grade and Eric hadn't even started school yet. Now, John's family is very interesting because he's, um, he's uh, first cousin three times removed from the artist John Clockman, who is quite famous, has famous paintings. And he also um, is, uh, his background is interesting too because his grandfather was a bishop in the Methodist Church and as when he was um, active in the ministry, he was invited to go on a camping tour with Henry Ford and Thomas Edison and Firestone and President Harding. And we have a big album with pictures of his grandfather and grandmother on that camping trip. The Winter Park Historical Association wishes to thank Flora Harris Twachman for sharing her knowledge and the tour of her home, the oldest house in Winter Park. Originally uh, known as, the, as East Bank, uh, today it is more familiarly called the Comstock Harris House. Comstock for Mr. William Comstock, who was one of the original owners, and Harris uh, for the family who has lived here for over 74 years uh, caring so diligently and tenderly for the home. Uh, this is Eleanor Fisher on the tour of Winter Park Historic Homes, August 2002.